my 31 year master trainer. I've won uh, 15 bodybuilding trophies, ranging from Mr. Brisbane, uh, Mr. Queensland, Mr. Gold Coast, Mr. Australasia. Uh, competed uh, on a top level, world level stage, um, two weeks before the Mr. Universe. Um, I went through a plate glass window and lost 70% of my blood, lost my bicep, so my bodybuilding career ended. From that point in time, I needed something because I fell into deep depression. So I took up Muay Thai kickboxing at way too old an age of 30 years old. Told that I'd never do it because I'm too old. By the time I was 35, I was on Fox Sports TV, Queensland Muay Thai kickboxing champion. So that's where I learned all my training techniques. A lot of it was through the bodybuilding. I understand bodybuilding does carry a stigma with it, but the range of exercises that vary from a Mr. Brisbane to a, a world stage level is massive. So there's not too many people that know as many exercises as I do to transform bodies rapidly. All right, Olive, down here, please. Uh, you could go there, I'll turn that around for you, Jess. Auntie Marge down there, you're ready with your usual seat. I grew up myself through uh, domestic violence uh, from my father. Uh, he's bashed and raped my mother for about 20 years but I needed something as a power of identity because he took away my confidence and self-esteem only to go through my brother not being able to cope and committing suicide. So all the issues that I've been through are pretty much exactly what Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people have been through anyway. As Aboriginal people, you know, if we walk on our country, 500 metres below us is ancestry history of, you know, our ancestors, blood and bone down there. So if you walk on country, you're going to be healed anyway. So through that we go up the top, we have a yarn about our problems and we give uh, solutions to problems and immediately, especially to do with weight loss and confidence. And when the body transforms, muscle happens. So when you create muscle in the body, muscle is energy. That alone changes hormones in your body, which makes you think different. If you worry all the time, the hormone that's released is called uh, cortisol and the opposite of the cortisol is the endorphin. So if I'm releasing happy hormones all day long and dealing with the outside issues, because I've been there myself, well, the body's gonna be created and so does the mind. This is Auntie Marge, Auntie Marge, no longer diabetic. Auntie Marge has lost 18 kilos, no longer needs a walking cane. Saw her one year ago, they had to lift her out of a car to get her to stand up. Right. Where's the walking stick? It's at home. I use it now in case somebody breaks into my house, so I'll hit them with the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Auntie. Thank you, my darling. That's all right. Okay, over here we have Olive. Okay, what's your age, Olive? 71. 71. Suffers from emphysema? Yes. Let's talk about what, how you were when you came to me. What was going on? I was very depressed. Very depressed? I'm overweight, well and truly overweight. And I just wanted somebody to help me get on, you know, get, a, get into a program to get my weight off. And then I feel 100% better. How many kilo have you lost? Uh, 15. 15 That's, kilos. Yes, so yes. you're doing weights now with me? How many yes. times a week? Three times a week. Training has been really good for my general health. It has been fantastic. My doctor's seen a difference in me and that to what I was before. Jess used to do the cooking from the lounge room floor. So Jess used to, she couldn't stand up. So they'd bring the stove to her so she could cook for the little ones. No flexibility. We do one length of the shopping centre down here. I take them all down the shopping centre because there's air conditioning and police and ambulance because these are high risk clients. So the support is there. Plus there's lots of benches on the way down so we can stop start, yep. correct? So the first length that you did on the length of that shopping centre down there, how many times did you stop? 21. 21 times, and how old are you? 29. Right, so pretty horrific, eh? Yeah. Even I was scared. But now you could do the whole lot around. I yes. twice. You stopped twice? Yeah. Yeah, that's all, eh? Uh, now you walk the little one to the kindergarten? Yep, yeah, what do you talk? I'm sick of talking. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can pick, uh, take my daughter to kindy now and pick her up. Um, 
I stand up while I'm cooking. I couldn't stand up long enough to even shower. But now I can, I know you start the bath, but now I shower every night. Um, I didn't like going out because I didn't like people seeing me. We now get out more and I feel better about myself since coming. Yeah. How's the effect of training with the aunties and all that been with you and training with the indigenous people? Oh, it's been really good. Tell me about They're that. very supportive. I love coming here and yep. training with the aunties. Who's your greatest influence? Aunty Mars. Oh, of course. <laughs> we have Leslie. Leslie, 45 kilos in six or seven months we did that in with no loose skin. Using carbohydrates, in fact, five meals of it, combined with the correct amount of protein. Protein builds muscle. We started at five, now we're up to eight meals of protein a day. She's eating more food than ever and still shrinking. Apart from losing the weight, I've also eradicated all my uh, medication, so I'm no longer um, on antidepressants, anxiety tablets or sleeping tablets, uh, which I was taking for the last 10 years. No one had ever questioned why I was on those medications until I actually met Kalka. Turned out I was incorrectly diagnosed, um, was given antidepressants because of uh, grief and the trauma that I was carrying around um, from my mother's death. Um, so now I've developed my own coping skills. My mother died um, at the age of 59 from diabetes, so I was told that if I didn't do something about my weight that I'd end up like my mother. What age did your mother die? 59. Of diabetes, right? Yes. Do you drink alcohol anymore? No, I used to be a very heavy drinker. I used to drink up to six bottles of wine a week. Um, I don't touch any of it anymore. Um, there's no more self-medicating. All right, so I'm going to design you a workout real quickly here, girls. That one, and then there, and always a hammer. CBC, chest back, dollar coin. You've got different weights there. You're going to have one muscly arm and one skinny arm. I'll give you the weights there. So what I do with people here is if they have heart conditions or chronic disease or any ailments, they'll do single leg, single arm stuff, single limb stuff, so that the heart doesn't accelerate. So you'll be seated and just come straight up and put it down to the side. Punch up, yeah, blow out, hold your breath and you'll die. Always blow out before you take it up. There's your glutes, all right? Yep. Glutes are the strongest muscle in your body, pounds per square inch, work them. Amongst the Aboriginals in the Torres Strait Islanders, family is one of the most important things with us. So if we stay a tight knit community, we can all heal each other. It's not just me, it's everybody. So when you sit down in a circle, we have our yarn circles quite regularly. And that's what we've been doing for 160,000 years is sitting around circles. Sometimes these circles will go for three days, but that's where we solve problems. Yeah, and then we all heal from each other. So the spirit stays strong the whole time. By one person seeing a 71-year-old losing all this weight, 16 kilos in record time, well, the 50-year-old goes, oh, hang on, she's older than me, and she got no walking cane no more. Well, I can do that too. So they all feed off each other, really, you know what I mean? Yeah, and the women love getting together as we're in business anyway. I'm just lucky to be able to listen to this stuff. Probably the doctors need to um, listen to what they've got to say about their trauma and give them the correct food. Because I, I do know a lot of overweight physiotherapists. I train them. I do know a lot of overweight doctors. I train them. But until I give them, I don't know what they know, don't get me wrong. Um, and I enjoy training them because I learn off them too. But until they get the food right, the right combinations, the right varieties, um, they're not really going to get through it. There are a lot of doctors out there that just give out medications like lollies, unfortunately, rather than just getting the fat off them in the first place and let the body heal itself. They have to get them into a gym. I know the gyms carry a stigma with it, but if they can just do some strength training once or twice a week, muscle is energy. Uh, the muscle will help them live longer. They won't get uh, as fragile and weak as quick as what they would do, do normally through age, because that's all it is, is muscle decay. Keep the muscle there, and you're always not going to have any loose skin, and you'll be good in the head. If only people would realise that if they left their comfort zone, and it's only 40 minutes twice a week, if they went and did some strength training, it's good to get away from everything anyway, and the gym is here for stress relief. You'll live longer, you'll reverse chronic disease, you'll heal your mind, and the bonus of that is, a family that trains together stays together.